For those of you who are registered in Math 333 at Western Illinois University, welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations. Uh, this video is going to kickstart our semester here um, with Chapter 1, which is entitled First Order Differential Equations. And in Section 1.1, we're going to learn about differential equations and mathematical models. In particular, we're going to get accustomed to the idea of what a differential equation is, what its solution looks like, and how it might be used in various models. So to get started, um, we have a definition here, an equation relating an unknown function with one or more of its derivatives is called a differential equation. A lot of times when I'm writing it colloquially, I'll just shorten it to capital D, capital E, DE for differential equation. Um, so these equations are a little bit different than what we're used to when we think of a quote, quote, uh, equation. So I have a note here. When we solve a differential equation, we seek a function. So emphasis there on the word function. We'll call that function y, or if we want to emphasize the dependent or the independent variable, we'll say y of x that satisfies the DE. So this is different because when we talk about equations in algebra, our solution is a number or a set of numbers that satisfies the equation. Here, our solution is a function, or later on in the semester, we'll have a set of functions that satisfies a particular differential equation or a set of differential equations. Um, so that's a distinctive difference here in differential equations. So let's take a look at how a function can be a solution of a differential equation. So example, consider, consider the following example in verifying solutions of differential equations. Number eight, verify that y1 and y2 are solutions of the differential equation, y double prime plus y equals three cosine of two x. And we'll assume here that those primes, the derivatives are taken with respect to x. All right, so they are giving us two functions, y1 and y2, and we just wanna verify that it is in fact a solution. So again, when we talked about the definition, it says that um, we're gonna find an equation that relates its derivatives with a, uh, with a different function. And so here, let's take a look at the first function. So I'm gonna write number one, verifying that equation y sub one is a solution. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at my differential equation and identify which derivatives I need. So if I look back up at this differential equation, I need y, which I have, and I need its second derivative, which I have not yet found. So I'm looking up here at y1, and in order to get to its second derivative, I need to compute its first derivative. So I'll do that first. So y1 prime is going to be a negative sine x plus, remember to use the chain rule, that's going to kick out a 2 sine of 2x. And so I really don't need this first derivative, but what I need is the second derivative. So let me take the derivative once more. That's a negative cosine x plus, the chain rule again kicks out another 2, 4 cosine 2x. All right, so now I'm going to go back up to this differential equation and let me plug in the second derivative and the original function. All right, so here we go. y1 double prime plus y1 is, I'm going to plug in the second derivative, negative cosine x plus 4 cosine 2x. And now, whoops, jumping around here. And now add in the original function, y1, which is a cosine x minus a cosine 2x. So now I'm going to take a look and I see my negative and positive cosine cancels. I have 4 cosine 2x minus 1 cosine 2x gives me a 3 cosine 2x. And I look back up at the right-hand side of my differential equation, and I'm going to give that a little check mark because it does, in fact, equal the right-hand side of my differential equation. And that's it. We've verified that y1 is a solution of this differential equation. Let's go ahead and check the second function, y2, verifying that y2 is a solution. All right, 
So same approach as before, I'm gonna compute the first derivative so that I can find the second derivative. So the first derivative of y2 is cosine x, uh, that's gonna become a plus two sine two x. And once more, the second derivative is a negative sine x plus four cosine, whoops, two x. So now let's take a look at that left-hand side of the differential equation. I want y double prime plus y. And of course, I'm working with y2, so I put the subscripts there. The second derivative is a negative sine x plus 4 cosine 2x. I want to add to that the original y2, which is sine x minus cosine 2x. And here again, my plus and minus sine x cancel. 4 minus 1 gives me a 3 cosine 2x. And check mark again because that matches the right hand side. All right, so you can see now how these functions are solutions to the given differential equation. Our goal here is to work our way up to finding those functions, but it's going to take us a little bit of time to actually get to that. Right now, we just want to understand what a solution to a differential equation is. All right, so as you can see by this last example, there need not be a unique solution. So if we take a look back up here, all right, so here again, let's clean this up over here. In this differential equation, we just showed that there were two separate solutions that satisfied it, all right? So we didn't get one distinct solution, we got two distinct solutions. Um, and so I have a note here, in fact, there are often infinitely many solutions. All right, so this should be similar to when we were talking about integration and computing antiderivatives, that we would get families of antiderivatives with that plus C. We're gonna see a similar thing happening here with differential equations. So one last definition here at the bottom of page one, an initial condition is a given condition that holds for the DE typically at time zero and it's denoted y of x naught where that naught is an n-a-u-g-h meaning nothing. Um, a lot of times this is simplified to just y naught or y sub zero. The initial condition is often used to solve for unknown constants. An initial value problem, which I'll often denote by IVP, is a problem consisting of a differential equation with an initial condition. All right, so sometimes we'll be given just a differential equation and other times we'll be giving a, given a differential equation with an initial condition. All right, so example, solve the following problem involving an initial value problem. So you'll notice what we have here is a differential equation, which is given to us first. We have a solution yx, and then we have an initial condition uh, y of zero equals 10. So part A, verify that y of x is a solution to the differential equation. So here again, we're just gonna go through and we're gonna identify what parts we need for y. So first of all, I see the derivative, and I see its original function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compute its derivative first. All right, so that e to the negative x is gonna kick out a negative. x goes to one, one goes to zero. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna note here in the margin that this is the left-hand side of our differential equation. So LHS is denoting left-hand side. Let's take a look at the right-hand side. All right, the right-hand side is X minus Y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute Y in. So Y is C e to the negative X plus X minus one. All right, so let's go ahead and distribute this negative. What we see here is we have a positive x and a negative x, so those are gonna cancel. And what's left over is a negative c e to the negative x. Again, distributing that negative makes it a plus one. All right, so if we take a look here, the left-hand side is negative c e to the negative x plus one. The right-hand side is a negative c e to the negative x plus one. Those are equal. 
And so I'll do a little check here. This means that this function satisfies the differential equation. Um, now, the only thing we haven't checked is this initial condition, how can we use it? So let's take a look at part B. Determine a value for C that satisfies the initial condition. So remember what we saw is that Y of X is a solution. We know that. All right, so we know that Y of X is a solution. And we showed that in generality. That means for any C value, this function satisfies the differential equation. Now, what we want is we need for y of 0 to equal 10. Well, what is y of 0? So go back up to your y function. Let me highlight that in a different color here in orange. Go back up to your y function and evaluate it at 0. So this is c e to the negative 0 plus 0 minus 1. All right, so e to the 0 is 1. So this is just c minus 1. In other words, I have 10 equals c minus 1. So c equals 11. All right, so now we know both that y of x is a solution. And furthermore, if c equals 11, then it satisfies the initial condition. All right, part C, we want to sketch several solutions of the differential equation and indicate which is the solution from part B. All right, so just as a reminder so that we don't have to scroll up, what we had for our solution was y of x equals c e to the negative x plus x minus 1. All right, and so we would like to sketch several solutions. The one in particular that we need to sketch is where c equals 11. So let's for sure sketch that one. And then let's pick a couple of other values for c to illustrate um, the set of solution curves. Let's choose c equals 5 and c equals 1. All right, but you may have chosen different c values. Just sketch a few solution curves so that we can see in general what they look like. Now, in this class, I'm allowing graphing calculators, and I absolutely would expect you to use a graphing calculator here in order to come up with these um, curves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out, and I'm going to pull up Desmos. And this is just desmos.com. It's a free online graphing calculator that's um, really quite well done. And you can see that I just chose those values, 11, 5, and 1. So you can see those there on the left. And they have corresponding colors. So where C is 11, you're going to see it graphed in red. Where C is 5, it's graphed in blue. And where C is 1, it's graphed in green. Now you'll notice here that those y-intercepts are changing. It looks like the intercept for 11 um, is at uh, 12 on the x-axis. The intercept for c equals 5 is at 6 at the x-axis. And um, the y-intercept for c equals 1 is at 2 on the x-axis. So it's always 1 greater than c. That's because of that plus 1 on the end. But you'll notice that as x increases, all of these curves are tending toward uh, y equals x plus 1. And this is because the exponential e to the negative x tends to 0 as x gets larger and larger. So all of these solution curves are converging to the line y equals x plus 1. But they're a little bit different there when we get um, kind of in between, oh, about 2 and negative 2 or so. Um, so let's go ahead and just graph these back on the set of axes in our notes. All right, so I'm going to uh, stick with the same color scheme. Let me go back and look here. So red was C equals 11, and then blue and then green. All right, so let me grab red here. We had a y-intercept of 12. So let me count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12. That's at the very top. All right. And then what we want to do is we want to sketch this tending toward x equals 1, or x, y equals x plus 1. So in black, let me just kind of sketch that. I'm going to just plot that in a dashed line. 
and that'll help guide us. All right, so back to red, our curve looked something like this. All right, then I believe next was blue that intersect, intersected at six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that looked something like this. And maybe I'll give a little code here in the margin. All right, the last one we'll do in green to kind of stick with what Desmos did. C equals one intersected at two. And looked like this. All right. So, um, of course, if you chose different values for C, you would see slightly different graphs, but again, they would all have the same look. And we see a family of solution curves. All right. So, just a note here at the bottom the constant C is called a parameter, and the above differential equation has a one parameter family of solutions. So, we'll see later on where you might have several of these C's, maybe a C1, C2, C3. So, you could have a two or three. Uh, parameter family of solutions, depending on um, this, the setup of your differential equation. All right, so we end this section talking about mathematical models. And of course, that's what it's all about. We're going to use differential equations to model systems or um, to model uh, natural phenomena. Definition, a mathematical model consists of a list of variables that describe a given situation together with one or more equations relating these variables that are known or are assumed to hold. You'll notice that this solution, or excuse me, that this definition is not specific to differential equations. We use mathematical models in all areas of mathematics. Um, it's just a way to model things that happen in the real world. So we're gonna do exactly that here in differential equations. So in these next examples, write a differential equation that is the mathematical model of the situation described. All right, let's take a look here at number 32. The time rate of change of a population P is proportional to the square root of P. All right, we have several key phrases here. Whoop. The first one here is time rate of change. Whenever you see that, rate of change denotes a derivative. So the time rate of change of a population P is gonna be dP dt, where that little t on the denominator is the rate of change with respect to time. All right, then the word is always is equals in uh, mathematics. And then we have another important phrase, proportional to. This is so important. Students forget this all the time. Whenever you see proportional to, that means you need to introduce a constant of proportionality. Generally speaking, that is denoted by lowercase k, but it can be any constant, so any variable here, is proportional to the square root of p. All right. So here is our differential equation. Notice that P was already introduced in the, um, in the statement where it says a population P. K was not introduced, so you should introduce it here. This is for some constant K. All right, so again, I cannot stress enough, don't overlook that proportional to that's where we bring our K in to set up a proportion. 35, in a city having a fixed population P, the time rate of change of the number N of those persons who have heard a rumor is proportional to the number of those who haven't heard the rumor. All right, so what we have here is the time rate of change of the number N of those persons who have heard a rumor. So let's set that up first. That is dn dt, um, again, is equals proportional to, means we need to bring up that constant of proportionality k. All right, and so here's where we have to be very careful. This last phrase is proportional to the number of those who haven't 
heard the rumor. All right, remember N is the number of people who have heard the rumor. So what are the number of people who haven't heard the rumor? Well, we know that there's a fixed population of P. So it's just gonna be P minus N is those who have not heard the rumor. All right, again, P and N have been introduced, but K have not, has not. So I'm just gonna indicate for some constant K. If you wanted to use the constant C um, or any other value, that's fine. Um, for proportionality, again, just introduce your constant. All right, and to end our notes here, we have a few more definitions, which will help us um, be able to adequately speak about differential equations. The first one here says the order of a differential equation is the order of the highest derivative that appears in it. So um, let's go back to um, one of our previous examples here. In problem 20, in looking at this differential equation, the highest order of a derivative is the first derivative. So this differential equation would be a first order differential equation. If we go back further yet, all right, this guy right here in problem eight from the textbook, its highest derivative involved is the second derivative. So this differential equation would be a second order differential equation. All right, let's scroll back down. All right, so we understand the order. We have an nth order differential equation with an independent variable x and an unknown function or dependent variable y is in general of the form f of x, y, y prime, y double prime up to the nth derivative equals zero, where f is a specific real valued function of n plus two variables. All this is saying is that this equation is some equation that relates x, y, and possibly any of its derivatives up to the nth derivative. Now, as we saw in that first example, that second order derivative did not include the first derivative. It had y double prime and it had y, but it did not include y prime. So just because you're an nth order derivative doesn't mean you're gonna use every single derivative in between, but you might. All right, next definition. We say the continuous function u equals u of x is a solution of the differential equation on the interval i, provided that the derivatives u prime all the way up to the nth derivative exist on that interval, and that when you plug that function and its associated derivatives into the differential equation, you get out the correct answer, in this case equals zero. This must be true for all x values within your interval. We often say that u or u of x satisfies the differential equation. So you can either call u the solution of the DE or you can say that u satisfies the DE. Either way expresses the same um, idea. And finally, a differential equation is said to be ordinary if the unknown function depends on only a single independent variable. If the dependent variable is a function of two or more independent variables, then the differential equation is said to be partial. So as you might guess, if you have multiple independent variables, then your derivatives become partial derivatives as is introduced in multivariable calculus. In this course, we are only gonna concern ourselves with ordinary differential equations. That is, we're not gonna work with multivariable functions, only single variable functions. There is a subsequent course that would deal with partial differential equations, um, but that will not be covered in this course. All right, this concludes the notes for section 1.1. Thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for additional notes in later sections.